In this video, what we're gonna do is see how we can set up Cinema 4D using the smoothing deformer to create somewhat of a cloth brush. I've seen some really good results in Blender, and I've also seen some similar videos in Cinema 4D, but I wanted to dive into this a little bit deeper and see if we couldn't find some other things we could do with this. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna start by creating a sphere. And what we're gonna wanna do with this sphere is change the type to something that looks a little bit better at the poles and works a bit better with the formers. So that could be hexahedron, which is squares, or icosahedron, which is triangles. Either one you go with, what you're gonna to want to do is increase the number of segments to something like 75, 80, somewhere in there. You could maybe go a bit higher. Um, it won't make that much of a difference. Uh, for our purposes right now. Um, next up, we're going to make this sphere editable. So I will hit C on my keyboard or hit the button right here. And from there, what we're gonna do is add the smoothing deformer. So my object is selected here, my sphere. I'm gonna find smoothing, I'm gonna hold shift so that the smoothing gets added as a child to our sphere here. From there, what we're gonna do is switch the type of smoothing in the object tab to um, relax. We're going to hit initialize Maybe set the iteration somewhere between 30 to 50. I'll do something like 40. Take the stiffness down to zero. Last thing I'll do before actually um, adding some detail to this is going to be to put the sphere inside a subdivision surface to help smooth out the end result. So I'm gonna have the sphere selected, hold Alt, come over here to subdivision surface, click on that, and we'll see it gets added to our setup now. With that, we can now select the sphere, and we can use a couple of different tools to do that. Some of the um, brush tools in um, the sculpt or brushes here actually uh, work pretty well, like grab. Um, I've also found that if you hit M and then I for magnet, that tool works very well um, uh, too. And in fact, um, I just resetted this to the default because I had been messing with this. The smear mode definitely works, but there's a few others that can do things um, as well. And just pulling up that tool, um, just by you know resetting it here, at least by setting it back to the default, does allow you to see some of the other options. Uh, the biggest one though is really just changing the size or radius, which you can do by clicking in your mouse wheel if you have one and moving the mouse left or right. If you move the mouse up or down, that will actually do strength. Um, so what we can do is once we're happy with the size of our radius here, kind of click and drag, and you wanna be a little bit careful as you do that. You don't wanna necessarily do it off to the side so much as you wanna do more kind of towards the middle of your object, something that's facing you kind of straight on. And you can see how we're able to kind of sculpt something that looks like it has some fabric, but you can see how we're also, you know, kind of creating a little bit of an indent there. So you wanna be a bit careful with that. And we'll see how on different shapes, um, it can be a little bit easier uh, and whatnot. So that looks pretty good. Like I said, changing the, the size of this can help a little bit as well to create some wrinkles as I just kind of click and drag. You'll see we get less of that kind of indentation. All right. Um, and we also have those different modes here in the magnet that I mentioned. Um, so one of the ones I think works very well is spin. And I think it works a bit better with larger one, how you can see we're able to kind of crinkle this up and spin it. All right, so that looks very fabric-like and soft. You could undo that. You know, Twister, Vortex work pretty much the same way. Surface Smear does something as well that looks pretty good. Um, it does allow us to create kind of a big crease, but depending on how you kind of work with this, you can create some other wrinkles as well. All right, so that's kind of the basics here. The last thing I'll say is, I'll go back to Smear and kind of make a few other wrinkles again like I was doing. All right, um, I wanna point out, you can come back up here to the smoothing and make some changes here as well. You can increase the iterations a little bit and you can see how that makes things um, you know, look different. If you turn down the iterations, you'll eventually kind of have a, have a way to control the strength of this. Uh, but if you turn up the iterations, you'll actually get more kind of deformation and wrinkling over this whole thing. And depending on the shape of your geometry, this may work, it may not. Um, but I'll set that back down to around the 40 I had it before. And stiffness as well can be used to kind of control the strength of this a little bit. Um, so just keep that in mind. You do have a few different ways of dialing this back. Um, obviously you also have strength, um, but even just using the strength you can see um, doesn't completely get rid of this. And that's because we initialized this, so we would need to restore it and that kind of reverts it to its initial shape. So that's kind of the basics of working with the cloth, cloth type brush set up there. Um, now what we can do is use it on a few different kind of real life objects here, starting with 
say a pillow. So here's a pillow I created. Um, there was actually already a pillow here. This is really just a file from um, the asset browser, but I made my own pillow and just placed it here to kind of go over this. And the first thing I wanna point out here is that this pillow does not have a lot of geometry by default. And so I'm going to do this process twice, once to give a little bit more definition to the pillow and the second to actually um, kind of add the wrinkles like um, we just saw. So same process, I'm going to start by adding a smoothing deformer, switching it to relax, initializing, setting the iterations to, like I said, somewhere between 30, 50, take this stiffness down, select the cube, and I'll go back to the um, magnet tool here. And now I can just kind of grab this and just start to shape this a little bit more. You know, I'm going to be limited by the number of polygons in this object, uh, but also the size of my brush. And so those are both of the, the limitations I'm running into because really that's the amount of geometry I have to work with. So, you know, that looks pretty good just for kind of sculpting this a little bit, you know, adding a little bit more shape, right? You can get things to look a little bit strange if you're not careful, but that looks pretty good. So what I'll do is right click on this cube and go current state to object, which will actually kind of bake down or collapse that deformer into it, very much like flattening layers in Photoshop. From here, what we're gonna do is take the subdivision surface that's on here and make this editable, all right? So either by hitting C or right clicking make editable will collapse down um, that subdivision surface. So now we have more of those polygons to work with. And we're just gonna repeat that process. Put it back in a smoothing, switch it to relax, initialize, put it in another subdivision surface, and come here and use our magnet tool again, MI. So now we should be able to get some finer kind of wrinkles and details in here. And if I'm not happy with the mode, remember we do have some of those other options I mentioned. So why don't we see what spin does? Just a little bit there. Not too bad. Right, spinning a little bit. Not quite the wrinkles, you know, I was hoping for at the moment, but the good news is we can always set that back to smear and really start to kind of work. Like I said, towards the middle is where this works best. So rather than kind of working at an angle, you know, center wherever it is you want to add those wrinkles and then just kind of go back and forth. And once again, I may be kind of running into the limitation of my geometry, right? Maybe I probably should have turned the subdivision surfaces up to three before I collapsed it down. But hopefully you're starting to see how we can get some interesting wrinkles and shapes here. You know, it's similar to sculpting, but we end up with something that does look a little bit more fabric-like or cloth-like, although I wish those went a little bit further back. Okay, so that's the idea. Here's what we get without our geometry turned on and maybe a bit too much in a couple areas. Um, good news, we do have those kind of ways of either reducing the strength, maybe turning up the iterations. Here will help a little bit, and I do think that ends up being the case where it does kind of give us, you know, something a little bit more um, fabric-like with those new kind of wrinkles and stretches being added. So I think that ended up looking pretty good. Obviously, there are a bunch of different ways to create a pillow. You could even simulate it using soft bodies, but I don't think you'll quite get the amount of wrinkles here unless you really turn up the polygon count, and that can be a little bit tricky um, to simulate that. So um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now for the second example, what I wanted to do was do the same process, but on something maybe a little bit larger like a blanket here, because this will really kind of show us the limitation of this technique. Now, what I have here is a plane with the cloth um, tag applied to it, and then all the other pieces of geometry of the bed here with the collider um, tag on it. And this model is also from the asset browser. This isn't the same room. Um, I just grabbed the bed after searching for bed. But now if I hit play, what you will see is that this droops relatively nicely over our bed here. Uh, now what I wanna do though is collapse this down so that the simulation kind of sticks and that I don't have to worry about it changing or re-simulating every single time. And the way you want to do that is to right click uh, and choose current state to object, right? I can get rid of my existing plane here. Here's my current plane that's had the simulation baked in. If I scrub back and forth, nothing changes. It still has the um, cloth tag, so I will get rid of that. Um, and I'm left with a vertex color, kind of a velocity thing, uh, which I don't think we really need, but we'll just keep there 
because. Now, with this technique, we do want to be careful uh, when when working with this. So I may not want to kind of put this into a subdivision surface and then collapse it down. I keep hitting the wrong shortcut key. There we go. So I wouldn't want to do this, make it editable, and then use this technique as I found it's really, really slow. So instead, we'll try and work with it here. In a perfect world, I would like these rectangles to be closer to um, squares just to help uh, things deform a bit better. But let's see what we get here. Create the smoothing deformer like we've been doing. Switch it to relax. Hit initialize. Set our iterations maybe on the lower end, just because I think things could maybe start to slow down a bit and take the stiffness down to zero. So I'll start with my plane, go back to my magnet tool here, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And you can see I'm still able to add some detail. You have to be a little bit careful though, because this will want to potentially kind of go into um, your um, geometry here. I'm not terribly concerned about that because we do have ways around it, but you can see I'm able to kind of wrinkle this and do a pretty decent job of just adding some other details to this. We could put this in a subdivision surface like this though um, to help smooth out the end result. Go back to our plane, maybe do just a little bit more of this. And like I said, I'm not thrilled about this, but I'm not terribly concerned either. You know, you could always come back here with um, say, you know, a sculpting brush and pull it, pull it out that way. But yeah, I'm able to get some nice additional wrinkles, you know, imperfections, things like that. Can always use those other modes that I was showing you. Um, and then ultimately, oops, if I'm happy with this, what I can do is put this into a thicken. And honestly, I probably don't need the subdivision surface if this is the route I'm gonna go, or maybe even a cloth surface. Um, Either one of these will work to add some thickness here and help kind of get around this. So if I add the thicken, except make the order correct, get those shortcut keys fine, you can see, you know, we've added some thickness here and it's also rounded it out. I don't think we need this though, because in the thicken, we do have subdivision. So, you know, that 10 centimeters is probably a bit much. So maybe we can do something like this. Um, could also maybe adjust the position a bit and then start to smooth this out, although I'm not really seeing that smoothness like I would expect. So maybe we would want to use subdivision surface. You can see that looks pretty good. Still maybe a bit too thick there, right? I mean, I suppose it's possible there are comforters that thick, but that looks pretty good. And if I still have a couple areas that are, you know, eating through there, I could always come to my brushes, um, choose my grab brush. Well, this could potentially, you know, work with our sculpting thing as well. You can see how quickly it is to just kind of pull this away further out like we need to. You can also use the grab brush to kind of help with the wrinkles as well. But uh, with that one, you definitely want to be careful and kind of work with, you know, almost uh, your, your 2D views here, looking at things kind of from the side, from the top, not really trying to work with it in perspective. Last thing, as we've kind of talked about, we could maybe work with the iterations a bit higher here. So maybe I'm gonna just type in 150 to see if that does anything, you know, I like, and it seems to be adding maybe a little bit more detail in a few areas. So that looks like it could be working pretty well, right? Just kind of extenuating a little bit of the, the details I already added. And if I need to go back in, do a little bit more there. I absolutely could. But yeah, now we have a little bit easier way of sculpting and adding details to cloth surfaces to make them look a little bit more organic and natural. So that will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could like it. Uh, and if you want to see more videos like this, please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care.